Hi, welcome to this episode of In the Creation Room. Today, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite uh, little studio creations, uh, my heart bowls. Those of you that have read my book will already know the heart bowl story and, and the behind the scenes sort of uh, how they all came about and this, that, and the other. I won't tell you all about that now because that's then bait for you to go and, and buy the book, which would be a good thing because it supports the project. Uh, but in the meantime, today I'll show you how they're made. And these are really nice little bowls to have in your gallery for a number of reasons. Uh, people love them. That's reason number one. They're one of my uh, top sellers. Uh, reason number two is you can get really creative with your glazes. And because of the size of these bowls, they're super to use as glaze tests because most of us, when we're making our glazes tests, we're making like 100 grams, 200 grams, and you're testing it on that little tile and you don't really have the best idea how the glaze looks that way. Whereas with these heart bowls, uh, you can pour your 100 grams or 200 grams on the inside of the bowl, swish it all around, pour it out the spout. You get a nice even layer that way so you can see how your glaze is looking. And then you can use uh, your glaze tongs or whatever to pour it on the outside. And then you can see how the glaze looks when it's thicker or thinner as well. So this, this one makes me think of like a leopard or something. Isn't that cool? So this is the same technique. It's uh, the Mexico oil spot on the outside and inside, like dipped. And then I poured Linda's yellow on the inside of this. Both those glazes are in John Britt's Cone 10 glaze book excellent book can't uh, recommend it more i thought i'd show you a couple of older uh, heart bowls um, i used to make them a lot smaller uh, I, I don't know they have a certain intimacy when they're this size that i really like but my aging hands <laughs> it's really it's actually more it's harder for me to do something this small than it is you know to go to this sort of size oh and that sound you keep hearing in the background that's my dogs chewing on their their steamed cow's ear which i've given them to keep them quiet while we're filming but obviously it's not working anyhow there's a there's a nice smaller one that's a oxidation my charcoal glaze and that's oxidation as well the size that i make these days um, that i'm going to be demonstrating is the size that sells the most is the most popular uh, so why don't i show you the most popular okay let's go make them Nice soft clay is a good thing. All right, so just like I did with uh, the previous video where I was doing the small bowls and I left a little dent there, um, just gives you a little bit of a guide for your foot and uh, some where to stop when you're going down to make your hole. So I like to stop just under half an inch from the bottom, say. Just a little under that, and then you just spread her out a bit. Now, if you have problems with your thumbs, just switch and do it with your, your fingers. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull up. It's my second pull. Alrighty, that looks good to me. It nice and smooth. It takes off those throwing rings. And there we go. Now for the inside, Michael Sherrill makes gorgeous tools and I'm gonna use his uh, ribs now. You can go with a slightly bigger one. Uh, there's different sizes or you can go with a smaller one. For this one, I'm gonna go with the medium size. I'm gonna start at the very top, and I'm pressing ever so slightly, and uh, just following the shape of the bowl to smooth it out and get rid of all those little lines. Um, couldn't quite finish it 
just perfectly. So I'm going to switch to the, the smaller rib for the bottom. Let's go back over it like so. Holy, I'm pressing a little bit outwards and down. So I'm also shaping at the same time and then down. Now, if you're not that comfortable using the metal ribs, then use one of his rubber ones. They're, they'll, it'll do the job as well, very, very nicely, and sometimes can be a little bit easier, more forgiving to use if you're not that used to using the metal ones. And then uh, do my cutoff, my fish line, cut it off, and there it goes. And there you go, the makings of a hard bowl. Obviously too, too wet to trim and do everything, so fortunately for you, I'm kind of like a baking show here. I've got uh, some that I threw yesterday that I'm gonna show you the next step with. Okay, as promised, just like a baking show, I have one here ready for you. Uh, so these need to be really quite soft to trim, but you also need to have the rim be stiff enough to be able to turn it upside down and still uh, flexible enough that you can actually alter it afterwards. I trim these a lot softer than I used to as I've gotten better at it. So at first you may find yourself letting the piece get a bit more on the dry side before you trim it and then as you get used to doing these you'll probably find that you're okay with trimming them when they're a little bit softer. Now trimming a fairly damp clay like this can be a bit of a challenge but I found that this tool is actually very nice for working with fairly soft clay. Because you know how when you're working with a ribbon tool, uh, the soft clay, I, at least I find this, the soft clay can be a bit of a problem. It sort of clogs up or whatever. Anyhow, I found this, you know, the soft clay, it, it cut through very nicely. No complaints there. And you can see how soft the clay is by how the bits aren't falling to the side as I'm trimming. They're actually sticking to the pot because it's just that wet. So I get to the top. I'm going to just bend the tool downwards a little bit, just ever so slightly, so then it's making it the beginning of the foot, just like so, okay? Easy peasy. Now, this little hook is splendid for this part. Now, as the clay is quite soft, it's grabbing a bit, so I'm going to go back and put it on an angle. Okay. And then we're just going to flatten out the bottom. Now for this part, I'm going to go back. And I'm going to finish off with this tool. Just to make the, the line a little bit smoother. Always bevel your edge a little bit. I want to seal the clay up nicely. And there we go. So that's the bottom done. The all important signature. So now this is an important step. If I can tell already by how that feels that if I go to distort that edge by making a hard bowl, it's gonna crack or there's a good possibility it's gonna crack. Now there's a few ways we can go about this. One thing uh, is you could spray them and cover them up and come back to them later. Uh, you could put a, run a, a damp towel over it, put it upside down on, on a damp towel. But what I like to do is I just take it in my hand. I give it a quick dip in my water. There. Like so. Then I move on and I'll trim two more bowls and I'll do the same thing to each bowl. By the time I've finished this bowl, I'll come back and this water will have soaked in nicely and it'll be all ready for me to shape. Uh, but I've already done these. So I'm going to demonstrate for you. This is uh, where we start to bend. So I put my hands like so and I take these fingers here and I just gently press in. Now, as you're doing that, if you're thinking to yourself, gosh, it's feeling really stiff. I'm nervous, it's gonna crack. Go get your sponge, just put a little bit of a little extra water on there and then just go back and carry on. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. So then like so, just so it's starting to curve in there. Now, okay, now I'm gonna turn my wheel head a little bit 
bit and I'm going to put my thumb here and this is going to start the dent and I'm slowly and you don't want to you don't want to rush this because if it's going to crack like I said this is where it's going to quack up turn it back around to me and take a look so you try to line up with that and then I'm just slowly coaxing it in there now I'm actually liking that that's looking pretty good uh, but I am such a perfectionist I'm just gonna go back and just give it a little a little more back look at it it's looking really good to me sometimes I squish this part in a little bit more to make it more oval such and there we go so then that one it's all done easy peasy so there you have it it's it's really quite simple uh it's really just a matter of making sure that your clay is is damp enough and being patient taking your time life is not a race uh i hope you've really enjoyed this episode of in the creation room not quite sure what our next video is going to be and in the meantime, I hope that you are going to go and buy my book, which uh, as you know, I'm sure <laughs> I'm always telling you this, it was a fundraiser for the Legacy Project. And I wrote the book uh, to inspire uh, potters worldwide and to uh, impart the knowledge that I've gathered through my years of potting, uh, along with many stories. And of course, uh, the first section of the book, my personal memoir, which will tell you that my life wasn't a cakewalk, but I still managed to be eating cake at the end. And that's a good thing. So pot on.